In this video, we'll look at the best budget Sony APS-C mirrorless cameras for video and photography in 2021. Sony have massively increased their range of mirrorless APS-C cameras over the last few years. Whereas there used to only be a few options, now they've introduced newer high-end options known as the Alpha 6600, 6400, and most recently 6100. Before those latest flagship releases, the most recent cameras before that were the 6500 and the 6300 back in 2016. And these five cameras all represent the highest end of the Sony mirrorless APS-C market. They all have 4K and 120 frames per second support, which means buying one of these is a no-brainer, right? Well, maybe. And that's because, simply, they are just a lot more expensive than some of the other budget options. And these prices can become a sticking point for beginners and experienced users alike. With prices ranging from around $700 for the A6100 up to an eye-watering $1400 for the A6600, and that's without a lens. So for creators like me who are on a budget, options like these are just simply out of reach. So what cameras do provide the best performance for the lowest budget? Well, let's find out. Before we get started, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I make lots of tips and tricks videos for Sony mirrorless cameras. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. Let's start with the cheapest and oldest camera on this list, and that is the Sony A5000. With a 20.1 megapixel sensor, this is the camera with the lowest sensor resolution on our list today. However, it's still capable of video at 1080p, but it doesn't support either 120 or 60 frames per second. It has a three inch flip up screen, perfect for vlogging. However, it doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, meaning that you're always relying on this monitor for reviewing your shots. The autofocus is okay, if not a bit dated and a bit slow. It does have face autofocus, which is a bonus, but with no 3.5 millimeter jack input for audio, no silent shooting, and the mentioned slow autofocus system, these really are quite considerable drawbacks for this camera and definitely worth considering before purchasing. But however, the main reason you'd be buying this camera is the price. As this is an older, discontinued camera now, if you look at the price new, you're still going to find it for around £450, $500. Well, that's not where you're going to buy this camera. If you are looking to get the A5000, you want to pick it up as cheap as possible, and the second-hand market, such as eBay, is where you would go for that. I've been finding them for as little as £75 with no lens. Now, okay, you do need a lens, but £75 is about as cheap as you're ever going to find a decent mirrorless camera. So this is an ultra low budget option with a lot of drawbacks, but if you're just looking for a camera to be a webcam perhaps, or just for streaming on Twitch, if you're not going to be using it for photography or high quality video work, then this could be a good option for you. I'm considering picking up an A5000 this year and doing a full comprehensive review. So if that sounds like something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. So next up, we're going to be talking about the trusty Sony A5100, the successor to the A5000. Despite being released at the back end of 2014, the A5100 is still in production and fixed some of the big issues of the Sony A5000. It records 1080p video at 60 frames per second, and it has a 24 megapixel sensor, making this a much more tempting proposition for video and photography alike. I've been using this video for about four years now, and I still use it for a lot of my video work and still some of my photography work. As you can see, it's a really small form factor. That flip up screen just means it's really versatile for different situations, and it's really simple to get started with vlogging and the like, because boom, you just flip up the screen and you're ready to go. The XAVCS video format means you can get 50 MBS data rate, which provides more detail and controls highlights better than the other video format, AVC HD. This alone makes it a massive plus for video creators. For an in-depth comparison of AVC HD versus XAVCS video formats, you can check out this video here where I go into much more detail. So the A5100, of course, isn't without flaws. It's getting old now, it still doesn't support 4K video, and it has a frustrating issue of overheating when recording video. It's also missing a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, has an older autofocus system, but not as old as the A500, and has no silent shooting. So it isn't perfect, and its new price is around £400, $450, something like that. But as I said with the A5000, it's its second hand price, which makes this a reasonable proposition. You can pick an A5100 up on eBay for as little as £200, $200 which is an absolute steal for a camera this good. This camera has served me well over the years for YouTube videos and photography. 
So next up is another hugely popular camera and what I'm recording this video on at the moment, and that is the Sony A6000. And despite being released in 2014, in 2016 it was named the biggest selling mirrorless camera of all time. And I can understand why, despite having almost identical technology to the Sony A5100, it has extra buttons and features and, crucially, an electronic viewfinder, which makes the usability of this camera much, much higher than the A5100. It has more expansive settings built in for photography, and I do find those customizable buttons make changing between modes very, very easy. Because of these extra features, the customizable buttons and the electronic viewfinder, the A6000 for me is the perfect beginner's photographer camera. Now again, it only supports 1080p video at 60 frames per second. So if 4K is a deal breaker for you, then the A6000 isn't for you. But I find it more than good enough for video and most of the time, for me anyway, 1080p is more than enough. And I find it a really good photography camera and the sensor produces very clean images. Of course, the downsides are similar to the Sony A5100, as it is a fairly similar camera. So that's, again, the lack of 3.5mm jack input, no silent shooting, and a slightly older autofocus system, though it does have eye autofocus, same as the A5100. The lack of these features is, of course, disappointing, and you would expect them from new cameras, but as it is now a six-year-old camera, then this is just something you're going to have to live with. And again, these compromises might be worth making because you can pick this camera up at a low price. If reports are to be believed, this camera has now been finally discontinued, I assume being officially replaced by the Sony A6100. And like the others on the list so far, it still has a high price from new. You're probably going to be looking at paying around $450, £450. I'll leave Amazon links to the new versions of these cameras in the description. But to be honest, you should just be picking up any of these first three cameras secondhand. Like the two that have come before, the best options for this camera is the secondhand market. For example, I bought mine secondhand on eBay at the start of 2020 for around £275. So that is a really good price for this camera, and as it's a year later, it's probably going to be cheaper again. I have no doubt you'll be able to pick up this versatile camera for a very reasonable price. So finally on this list, we're going to talk about one of the big guns, and that is the newer Sony A6100. Only released in 2019, this camera boasts a lot of features that every other camera we've talked about so far doesn't have. It supports 4K video at last at 30 frames per second and does 1080p video at 120 frames per second, making it a really great option for slow motion video, which is great for B-roll and extra kind of footage that you might put in your YouTube videos to make them look more professional. It has a lot more autofocus points than all the previous cameras, which means you get much quicker and smoother autofocus than any of the other cameras we've discussed so far. It also has the nice little extra feature of Animal AF, which means that it can autofocus and track an animal's eye, which is great for pet photography and wildlife photography. And Sony has definitely been listening and learning from the mistakes of those older budget cameras. It now has a 3.5mm audio jack, so that you can plug in a microphone directly into your camera, and it also boasts silent shooting. A nice addition is that it does have a 180 degrees flip up screen, which the Sony A6000 doesn't have, making the A6000 maybe not the greatest vlogging camera. It means that they've kind of made the A6100 do everything that the A5100 and the A6000 did together. So it's a combination of the best points of the previous cameras, which means surely this is the camera to buy. Well, the definitive answer to that is, well, probably yes, but but the but is a big but, and that, of course, is the price. As I mentioned at the start of this video, you're going to be looking at paying around £700, $750 to pick up this camera brand new. And as the camera was released in 2019, there simply is no second-hand market available for this camera. Anyone selling this camera second-hand is probably trying to retain the value of their original purchase price. So even though the Sony A6300, which we're not going to be looking at in detail in this video, New price is higher than the Sony A6100. In fact, as a second-hand option, if you're desperate for 4K, this might be a better option to pick up, as you can get an A6300 on eBay for around £450, $500. Which, for me, is still out of what I would call budget range. 
So there's still plenty of good options for Sony mirrorless cameras in 2021. Even though they're getting a bit older, I think there are certain cameras suitable for different situations depending on your needs. For beginner photographers, I'd always go for the Sony a6000. It's a great all-rounder for photography and video and a really great budget pick. For entry-level video work, I'd go for the Sony a5100. Its flip-up screen makes it great for video work if you're doing vlogging or even if you're just monitoring yourself while recording a YouTube video similar to this. It's a really handy feature and that low second-hand price point means that its barrier to entry for use and to be able to buy is really, really low. Just do be aware of the overheating issue with this camera, which can slow you down a bit while making videos. And if you're totally strapped for cash, then the Sony A5000 might be an option. As you can get it for around £75, $75. It is an option, but only if you really don't mind compromising on quality. The picture quality isn't as good. The autofocus isn't as good. I'd only really use the A5000 for a webcam for things like Twitch and Zoom calls, things like that. I think the sensor not being as good and the general picture processing not being as good as the A5100 or the A6000 means that I can't recommend this one really for photography and higher quality video. And then, of course, if 4K is a must for you, and it will be for a lot of creators, then you will have to be prepared to spend a little bit more. Your main options really are the A6100 and the A6300. Of course, we've talked about the price points of these. You're only really going to be able to pick up the A6100 new for around £700, $750. And with a bit of shopping around, you might be able to pick up the A6300 for around £500, $550 second hand. And for me personally, I'll be in the market for a 4K camera pretty soon. I'll be sticking with Sony because I've already got a lot of E-mount lenses. So I'll be considering the same two options. And right now I'm leaning towards getting the A6100 brand new. But of course, I will be having to shell out a lot more unless the secondhand price comes down a lot in the next few months. So there we go. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. Also, if you want to check out any of my photography, you can find it on Instagram at Aaron.Prescott. But that's it from me for now. Until next time, see ya.